I was poisoned by these. Never been so sick in my life. Five hours of vomiting and diarrhea, and then I passed out on the bathroom floor. Glad I didn't die. I'm tempted to have the remaining bag professionally tested. What you just heard was a one-star review of an online verified purchase of dried edible porcini mushrooms. And I came across that review after reading a recently published scientific paper that discussed the mislabeling of wild mushroom products. Now that reviewer, who was allegedly poisoned by the porcini mushrooms, had his or her wish come true because those porcini mushrooms, along with 15 other wild mushroom products, were professionally tested as part of this brand new study that examined the accuracy of the ingredients listed on product labels. And the results of the study may surprise you. Many commercially sold wild mushrooms are actually cultivated mushrooms. And of the mushrooms that are actually wild, many of them are not the same species that are listed on the labels. In the food industry, this is known as food adulteration. And unfortunately, it's not that uncommon. Olive oil, milk, honey, and orange juice are among the most adulterated foods sold here in the United States. We've also all heard the stories of kangaroo and horse meat being sold as beef, flounder being sold as halibut and sushi, and filler species being added to herbal products that are commonly sold on the shelves of big box stores. Now, it turns out that mushroom products can be adulterated too. And just to clarify what constitutes an adulterated food product, According to the FDA, food is adulterated if a valuable constituent has been omitted or abstracted in whole or part, a substance has been substituted in whole or part for a valuable constituent, or a substance has been added or mixed or packed with it to increase its bulk or weight, or reduce its quality or strength, or make it appear better or of greater value than it is. So the researchers in this brand new study tested 16 different food products that all claimed to contain wild mushrooms. Such products included dried mushrooms, powdered mushrooms, pasta sauces, soups, and flavor enhancers. All these products were purchased from local supermarkets in Salt Lake City, Utah, and from an unnamed large online retailer. I wonder which one that was. The researchers used DNA analysis to determine what was actually in the products. And what they found was that the mushrooms identified through DNA analysis in most products did not agree with the ingredients listed on the labels. For example, a mushroom powder that claimed to contain dehydrated porcini mushrooms actually contained button mushrooms in the agaricus genus and suillus mushrooms, but it did not contain any porcini mushrooms. If you're unfamiliar with suillus mushrooms, they're related to porcini mushrooms. Taxonomically, they're in the same order of fungi, but they're completely different mushrooms, particularly in taste and in texture. A pasta sauce that claimed to contain portobello, shiitake, porcini, and other mushrooms only contained suillus mushrooms. A package of dried mushrooms claiming to contain porcini mushrooms actually contained suillus mushrooms, griffola frondosa, which is the maitake mushroom, Rutstroemia firma, which is a little ascomycete cup fungus, and wood ear mushrooms in the auricularia genus. Now going back to that review that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where the purchaser claimed to be poisoned, that review was for a product that was tested in this study. So the product in question was a package of dried porcini mushrooms. And what's interesting is that the researchers visibly saw gilled mushrooms before they even tested the product. And if you know anything about porcini mushrooms, you know they do not contain gills. Their fertile surfaces are composed of tubes and pores. Well, a DNA analysis of the mushrooms within the package didn't reveal any porcini mushrooms, but it did reveal mushrooms belonging to several different genera, including two gilled genera, Lactifluus and Amanita. And the Amanita mushroom was a species known as Amanita pseudoporphyria. Amanita pseudoporphyria, it turns out, has been implicated in acute renal failure in at least one case. So it should come as no surprise that, in addition to the first review I mentioned, the same product, which claimed it contained only porcini mushrooms, received additional reviews like, big mistake, I got food poisoning with projectile vomiting. I threw up eight times over the span of about four hours till nothing was left but bile. I distinctly remember watching each mushroom coming back up like my body was showing me why I was so sick so I would not be eating it again. 
Too bad I can't give zero stars or get my money back for the nice piece of beef that was ruined. On three of these porcinis, I can see about seven to 11 dead white worms glued to the mushroom. I gave this product four stars because having white worms is normal for porcini mushrooms. But remember, no porcini mushrooms were actually in the package. And last but not least, the package I received included a mashed cigarette butt in the ingredients. Now, to be fair, not all the products tested were found to be adulterated, but the unadulterated products were the exception and not the rule. And in addition to discovering mushroom forming species that weren't listed on the labels, the researchers also found through DNA analysis the presence of various molds and yeasts, which isn't necessarily cause for alarm, but it could be worth further investigation. So wild mushroom products don't always contain what they claim to contain. Are you surprised though? To tell you the truth, I'm not that surprised. I've been a skeptical shopper for a long time. Even though I do buy a lot of food at the grocery store, I'm probably the most diligent and attentive shopper that I know. I tend to buy single ingredient foods. I tend to buy foods that I can visibly identify and I rarely, if ever, purchase wild mushroom products because I'm incredibly blessed to live in the great state of Pennsylvania where we have lots of forests and lots of wild edible mushrooms. But if you enjoy purchasing wild mushrooms that are sold in packages or as part of processed foods, be aware that you may not be eating what you think you're eating. And if we believe the old adage, you are what you eat, then I guess we could also say, you are not who you think you are if you don't know what you're eating. Just something to think about, especially in an age when we place a disproportionate amount of value on globally applied quick fixes and seem to forget that food whether we forage for it or hunt it or grow it or buy it or trade for it, food, you know, the stuff we put in our mouths, always has and always will be among the most important factors in determining just how healthy or unhealthy we are. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. I also encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. And if you are on social media, feel free to give Learn Your Land a follow on Instagram and on Facebook. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.